CPI data came out today, and if you watched it live, thank you for watching. If not, here is a great recap for you. So let's talk about how CPI data affected the crypto market. And if I could quote the great Duke Nukem, I ain't got time to play with myself. Let's get into it, everyone. All right, you pimps, players, and hustlers, let's learn. All right, so if you want to watch the full CPI breakdown, I will have this video linked at the end, and they're all in the live stream videos in case you didn't watch us live. So CPI data came in at 7.1, everyone, and here's your blue bar trend right for you. Previous month was at 7.7, .7 and I said anything 7.2, 7.3, or lower would send the crypto markets green, and what happened? Nope, that's exactly what happened everyone now to get these expectations it's actually pretty easy you need to look at cpi inflation data like this if we scroll up like a rocket we have to come down just as fast if we go up fast but kind of level off that then tells jerome powell and the fed hey we have to keep raising rates now there's a lag effect though every time they raise rates some people say it's six months i'm more to incline that it's around three months because whether it's your credit card companies you know home equity lines home loans stuff like that as soon as the fed change rate boom you start seeing rates change right away now the effect to the market sometimes takes a few months but the actual changing of rates happens very very quick so the reason the markets went green had to do with the delta, the 0.6 change that we saw from previous month to previous month. So we went from 7.7 .7 to 7.1. So we went back all the way to December of 2022. So we've erased almost one year's worth of inflation. And in fact, I think it's pretty much safe to say that we hit the peak here in June with 9.1. So now what I want to do with you is I want to show you exactly what the Fed looks like, okay? So like I said earlier, it goes like this, right? We go up fast, the Fed is expecting inflation to go down fast, okay? If things go up fast and down fast, it means the things that they're doing are working, even if we don't agree with how. Now, the situation that worries a lot of investors, as you see this line right here, is if we start going more sideways like this, rather than continuing on the same path down. If we go sideways like this situation here in the next couple of months, with CPI data, that is going to tell Jerome Powell and the Fed they have to keep raising rates at high, high clips. We're talking 75 basis, 50 basis point hits over and over and over again. Now, with this most recent CPI data coming back down, continuing the trend down here, that puts a lot of pressure on Jerome Powell and the Fed tomorrow, which is December 14th at 2 p.m. Yep, we'll have another live stream regarding that when they announce their next rate hike. That puts a lot of pressure on the Fed to say, hey, we're going to drop it 50, but we're going to be dovish. We're going to back off a little bit. We're probably going to go with 25 basis point hits and let's see what some of the data says. Now, there is an actual very good chance that Jerome Powell and the Fed come out with a 25 basis point hit based on the fact that we were able to erase one year's worth of the worst inflation data. All right. And now when you look at that idea of how big that is, hey, look what I drew on the screen. That was funny. I just did that just to screw around everyone. But when we look at this, right? What happened here, this down pressure right here, and I mean, you could see it clear as day right here. That is a very quick decline, all right? That puts more pressure on Jerome Powell saying, hey, whoa, 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 I don't have to go so hard. I could take my foot off the neck of the entire market. And the reason this is so important, because as Jerome Powell and the Fed start seeing this data, they don't have to go with the crazy rate hikes. Now, the goal that they have set is 2.0 so right now with us sitting at 7.1 we have a ways to go to get back down to that 2.0 target rate in fact if you really want to see when that looks like we have to zoom out to the five year here and you can see we were just there right around the first quarter of 2021 right around roni rona time is when things started changing right when all the fiat started happening started getting dumped into the market so we have to burn through all that extra cash throughout the globe this isn't just a u.s problem you're seeing inflation rates all over the globe mimic these exact lines right here so now jerome powell and the fed have to decide very hard do we go 50 or do we go 25 on December 14th? I'm still thinking it's a 50. If it's a 25, markets go green. Now, speaking of green, let's talk about what happened today with the likes of XRP and XLM. I got the stellar hat on, everyone. And if anyone knows where I can get myself a cool XRP hat, please let me know because I would love to wear one when I do specific XRP videos. 
As you can see, XRP rallied on that news. Bright as day that the markets are following CPI data macroeconomics. That's why we stress the importance of this kind of stuff on the channel. Not the fluff out there, but the data and the facts that the bigs out there are using to make these decisions. Now, the big point here is that we have to see they did not, I repeat, they did not break that 40 cent barrier. In fact, we were watching this live, we got to 39.6 and then that was it. We saw the retreat. We saw another move right back here to try to re-back down past that 39.3 could not happen we're now sitting at 39.1 so xrp right now you are seeing a heavy ceiling and when i say heavy i'm talking about near term let's not freak out here all right a near-term heavy resistance of 40 cents they couldn't even push it past that 39.6 mark but positive cpi data lower hits from the fed are gonna make xrp xlm green why is it gonna make xrp and xlm green because think as the Fed raises rates, right, your credit cards go up if you're buying a car, buying a home, home equity lines of credit, business loans and on. They're all tied to these rates, okay? So as the rates goes up, that means everything is way more expensive. In fact, a house. Houses, yeah. No, we're going to get into deeper CPI data. We're going to talk about housing, ladies, because a bubble did pop. But is it housing? Oh, don't worry. We'll get into that. But as this stuff gets more expensive, there's just not that much capital floating around to go into crypto, to go into venture capital money going into crypto and institution money, all that kind of stuff, right? It just gets dried up with interest rates. Now, the story with XLM was a little bit different, okay? Yes, XLM had that first pop right here, okay? But here's the problem, everyone. They couldn't even break through that 8.5 cent barrier and have since retreated even further than the likes of XRP. The problem here is this. When XRP rallied and the rest of crypto rallied, right? And we were watching the heat map. You guys saw it with me live. We were watching things go up 7%, 5%, 6%. XLM was only going up a couple percentage points. There was way, way less action in the likes of XLM on this recent movement. Now, did it go green? Yes, of course it went green, but it did not go green as the likes of others out there, except for BNB. BNB's got their own issues, and we'll talk about that some other time. But now, let's deep dive into CPI data and see what this shows us. Now, a bubble popped, and the reason the markets are rallying big is because one of the biggest consumer-driven bubbles is starting to pop. And I'm going to share that with you. So as you go through this data, as you go through these tables, you can pivot through the information. And as always, any article you see in this video will be linked in the description below. So what you can do is you can click on these bars and then you can start clicking on inside of them to see what makes up these different rates. Here's the bubble that popped everyone and no, 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 it was not housing. It was used cars. Used cars dropped by 3.3%. Look, the only negative up on the screen, you're sitting here going, Klaus, why is the used car bubble so important to crypto and the rest of the market? Super easy, everyone, because retail right now is what fuels crypto and the used car market is softening up. Now, the reason the used car market is softening up is because supply chains are opening back up. We're able to get chips, car parts, safety equipment, all that kind of stuff, which means new cars are finding their way on the lot. So old cars don't have that premium anymore. So the first bubble created by the Roni Rona supply chain crisis is now pop. That's right, everyone. The first consumer bubble has finally popped and the markets are cheering. Now, that being said, Used cars and trucks were only down 3.3%. Compared to new ones, we're up 7.2%. Interesting. And again, you can drill into all these. Now, again, what are affecting consumers, people out there? Because remember, that's what's driving crypto. It's not venture capitalists. They've got out of the market in a heavy amount. And it's not institutional money because they're not getting into the market until we get regs. So this is done by the consumer, by retail. It's kind of hard, though, to put a lot of money in the crypto market when guess what? Dairy and related products were up 16.4%. Cereals and bakery products, 16.4%. Non-alcoholic beverages, 13.2%. Meat, poultry, fish and eggs, 6.8%. And other foods at home, 13.9%. So you can see things that affect the consumers are still way, way high. But like I said, with that used car bubble pop in, that's given us some excitement. Now let's drill into deeper into other things that affect us, right? 
you can go into energy commodities or services. Let's kick on the commodities tab. Fuel oil is still high, up 65% year over year, same month. Gasoline, we're seeing a little bit of relief at the pump, but it's still way high compared to before. Gasoline, only 10.1%. So again, things that are affecting retail consumers out there are still very, very high. Again, if we click on energy and go into energy services now, you're going to see again, what are things that are affecting people? energy services 13.7 percent natural gas 15.5 we're getting into where people are going to be heating their homes more natural gas bills are going to go up and these are up 15.5 percent so when we get back to the main number yes the main number is 7.1 but within that 7.1, you could drill it down to a whole bunch of things. And in fact, the number of charts for this, there's tons of them. There's tons of charts that come up with this. We use this one right here because this is the one that the Fed's using where the Feds are trying to get back down to that 2.0 target rate. How is that for a bunch of information without wasting your time? Juicy bits as we take things deeper here, everyone. Now tomorrow, December 14th at 2 p.m. Eastern time is when the announcement of what the actual rate hike is going to be, right? 50 or 25 basis points. I'm leaning to 50 with the guidance on 25, but a decent chance of 25 with the Fed saying, hey, Merry Christmas, we might pump the brakes a little bit. Here's the thing. That data comes out at 2. At 2.30, Jerome Powell and the Fed comes out with his remarks. That's when we're going to be live streaming. We're going to be live streaming actually right before 2, just so we can make sure we catch the market reaction. But we want to catch his comments to let us know further guidance. Is he going to be leaning more to 25, especially in the Q&A part? That's why you're going to want to follow the live stream tomorrow. Now, again, if you can't follow the live stream tomorrow, it will be in that folder. Now, here's the big thing, everyone. The next CPI data is going to be on January 12th at 8.30 a.m. Eastern Time. Again, we're going to be live streaming it so that you can watch the market react. Watch your favorite cryptos react. Ask the questions as they're happening live. Good stuff, everyone. Thank you very much for watching this summary CPI data video. If you want to watch the full live stream of how the market actually reacted then with more information, more analysis, more Q&A stuff, welcome to watch that video right here. Until then, as more news breaks, I'm going to chill out, but I'll fill you in when it happens. Later, everyone.